Now the thing's going to dance around on the floor. It's going to move, so uh, I'll pull off this to stop it. There it is going. About 1,800 RPM. This is the dryer motor I pulled out this morning. It's a 1976, roughly 77, White Westinghouse. It's a Q612141. Has a flat belt. Dryer stopped, and the coil and everything works. Over temperature uh, heater coil, over temperature switch, and cycle switch is all okay. And then I don't have a schematic yet, and I've been trying to figure out really what's going on here. So I didn't see anything obvious, but I went ahead and pulled the motor out. And this is a centrifugal clutch here that is used to turn off the windings. Uh, these two lugs down here have the big wires that connect up uh, so that the motor has to turn before the heater comes on. And that's over here. Switch that's in the motor that goes through the big heater, which is mine's around 4,800, 5,000 watts, say. Goes through a high limit switch and a cycling switch. So the motor's got to come up to speed to pull out the start winding and to throw this switch. And that's over right here. And you can go through and manually click this thing over here. That's the weights to turn when it spins up to speed. And then there's the switch that's down in there. There's a little finger. You can actually take this off. I already did that uh, just to see what was going on. I've got the spring belt assembly off. You undo these two screws and pull this out. Uh, you got to be careful. The case can separate on here, so I kind of held this together. And I've never taken one of these apart. But the bottom two are for the high current, uh, you know, the 20 20 something amps for the uh, heater element and then this runs the motor. There's three contacts here. On this one there's a number five here which is onto this and there's a one and a four and what I've concluded on this just by playing around is that the white wire here is hooked up to one leg and the start and run windings uh, go in to a run to a number four and then this is the push to start switch and then the neutral goes through probably the door so this current this terminal here is this one isn't hooked to anything until it comes up to speed so when it goes up to speed this flies over and uh, takes out the start winding and what I've ohmed out here is the run and start together is about two ohms. Run only is about four. So there's two things are going on. When this comes up to speed, it takes out the start winding. And then over here it goes ahead and it's only using the run winding. And then it also goes through and connects this up so the uh, heater element can work. And so mine, the motor didn't work or the heater element. And... There's probably a wire or something busted I couldn't find yet. So I was all ready to order another motor online for about 100 bucks, And uh, it looks like this works. And I'll just show you in a second again. I plugged it in, but I'm going to do it over again. This was, I lubricated this about 11 years ago. And I put some Mobile One on there. This morning it was a little bit tight in there. And I put some uh, penetrating, I put some little silicon oil in there. I'm going to probably put some seeps and mobile one in there again and I did run this on the fan that's kind of hairy to do this <clears throat> you don't have to take the fan off on this I started to do that but the way this is it comes out it pulls completely out of the back there's only two bolts that hold this on because it's also held in here by this piece it goes into a into the vent piece and so this whole motor went underwater in Katrina, so I was all ready to write this off. I took it out after Katrina, washed it out in the bathtub, got the marsh grass out, 
and uh, oiled it up a bunch and it's worked ever since except I did put a heater element in and did replace a belt once but if anybody's got a schematic I've been trying to find one for this this is just a simple machine it'll run on 240 or 120 and I've found another schematic online I've just it's barely readable and I've kind of been piecing this one together so the neutral I believe goes through the door switch and then you've got the timer over here which runs these two contacts you got the cycle thermostat on mine high limit and the heater and then on low heat on mine <coughs> I believe it takes it's either taking this terminal and move it to neutral uh, or it may actually take this terminal and move it to neutral. Anyways, it's only putting 120 volts across this, so you get a quarter of the power. So we're going to fire the motor. This is totally not safe. I've got one of the wires connected up to one. And over here on five, I've got power hooked up. But this one is the, the gray wire, which uh, doesn't have any power on it until the switch throws. So I'm going to touch this, and it's going to start up and go through and throw the centrifugal clutch and then you can it'll go ahead and keep on running now the thing's going to dance around on the floor it's going to move so uh, I'll pull off this to stop it there it is going about 1800 rpm Got a lot of breeze here And that clicking sign was the uh, relay going back through. So we lost some. Hook this up again. So I've got it hooked up to one and five is power, and then the same same terminal. I'm hooking up the power to five. Five isn't hooked up because that's that hap, hap, that gets hooked up once it's up to speed. So this is the push to start. Come over and get me in a second. That's about it. Here's a close up of the. This is the original motor. I don't think we've ever replaced this. And so I thought it was a 76 in the brochure, but well, I think in the drum it says 77. So it's 76 to 77. So I'm not going to buy a new motor. I've got some other thing that a wire's loose or something.